Hey, friend, welcome to Finding Life. My name is Brian Bell. I'm so glad you're here. Happy March. It is Wednesday, March 1st, 2023, week five, day three, live stream number 24, day number 60 of the new year. All right, we got a fresh start. It's March. Actually, we have a fresh start every single day, don't we? Hey, good morning, Dana. So glad to have you on the show. Good morning, Dana. Let me get you added into the live stream here. Yeah, so let's live with intention. Let's know where we are. Let's know where we're going, and let's make today count. My name is Brian Bell. I'm here to live my life true to me and help you live your life true to you. Let me know any way I can help. You can join me on the live stream. I go live every morning on YouTube, Monday through Friday. Good morning, Chloe. So glad to have you on here, Chloe Bell. Chloe Bell joining on her own phone for the first time this morning. Good morning. So glad to have you guys on the show with me. Yeah, join me any morning, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. You can uh, make this interactive. You can join the live chat. You can make comments. You can ask questions. I'm here to help you any way I can. Let me know how I can help. Good morning, Audra. So great to see you. Good morning, Lucas. So great to see you. Yes, so great to see all of you. I've learned how to do my comments better with Tommy this morning, so I'm always evolving. I'm always evolving, so uh, we'll continue to improve continuously as we go. I'm getting ready. I think I'm going to start doing interviews. I think I'm going to start doing like try to get one interview a week and drop that on Saturday, still go live every morning, Monday through Friday, but do one interview uh, per week, an edited video, and then drop that on Saturdays. And so uh, that is in the thoughts. I've been talking a lot about thoughts lately. Hey, we went and saw the Jesus Revolution movie last night, didn't we, fam? Hey, Robert. Good morning, brother. So good to see you on on the show. We missed you last night, Robert. We missed you and Angela. I do have a picture from last night. Let me get to that. There was a... Here was us in the theater last night. We had this row right here. We had Ray. Can't even see who all was down there. We had Ray. We had Kaylee. We had Genevieve. We had Manny. We had Lucas, who's on the show. Good morning, Lucas. We had Audra. Good morning, Audra. We had Caitlin. We had Shane. I was sitting right here by Shane. And we have Bobby and Jaden. So, yes, the Jesus Revolution movie. Guys, let me know. Let me know what you thought about the movie. Uh, let me know on the live stream, and uh, I'll add your comments to the show. I will say for me, unfortunately, unfortunately, I built it up too much. I was so excited. I was so excited to see this movie. And I saw too much. I saw too many interviews. I saw too much before I saw the movie. So my own fault, I set the expectations so high. This movie, I had the, I had such great, I was so looking forward to it. I don't think it was even possible for it to live up to my expectations, unfortunately. I hate that, but it was a great movie. It's still a great movie. I still recommend that you go see it. And so, guys, let me know what you thought about the movie. Lucas, Audra, anybody else who's seen it, let me know. All right. So, yeah, we're talking about the uh, the movie. I think one of the one of the quotes I did hear last night from the movie, the truth is always quiet. The lies are loud. Have you guys heard that quote before? I had not heard that. I heard that in the movie last night. The truth is always quiet. The lies are loud. I did look that up last night. It seems like it is a known quote. It was new to me last night. I did think that was pretty good. I did think the coolest thing about, or one of the coolest things about the movie was, you know, seeing this this movement in the 70s that Time Magazine dubbed um, the Jesus Revolution that swept the country. uh, This and seeing seeing them seeing all this down in Orange County and Newport Beach. And seeing them doing all the baptisms in the ocean at Newport Beach. And then last night after we getting home, just realizing that since we moved here to help start Echo Church, we've done all of our baptisms in the ocean at Newport Beach. So that was a cool realization last night, thinking about just seeing, coming back home last night, me and Bobby looked up some some live footage uh, from that time on YouTube, and you could see, you know, you could see them doing like there's videos of them doing the actual baptisms down there at Newport Beach in the ocean in the 70s and and all of that and uh, just really cool to know that since we've been here we've been doing that we me and Bobby have been sitting on the beach in Newport watching people being baptized in the ocean uh, just like in the movie last night so that was super cool. Lucas says I liked it a lot. I know everyone. I think everyone in our group last night really really did like the movie a lot. I liked the movie too. I'm not saying it, it's, a, it's an excellent movie. I, lo- I think Kelsey Grammer, I think the actors did a great job. Uh, obviously a great message and, uh, and, and great story, great movement, great history. Um, 
I will I will reference an interview. Uh, one of the one of the interviews I had seen was with Greg Laurie, uh, with Ruslan. I, I discovered Ruslan this past weekend. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he lives about an hour south of here. YouTuber. Uh, his like my finding life. His is called Bless God. That's his Bless God, and um, he's got a lot of stuff on YouTube. And I saw him interviewing Greg Laurie over the weekend, and one of the one of the one of the things about one of the things he he wanted to talk about in that interview was how Greg Greg wanted the movie to show he said to him it was the most non-Christian Christian film. I I don't know that I agree with that, but Greg felt like it was the most non-Christian Christian film and one of the things he wanted to show was that you can like it's not like when we get saved, it's kind of like I was talking about yesterday, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, it's not like, you know, life is just all of a sudden great and nothing bad happens to us. We we still live in this world that's full of challenges and trouble, and we're still challenged, and we're still susceptible to fall. And in that interview with Greg Laurie with Ruslan, I'll, I'll put a link to it below, he's talking about, uh, he's talking about Lonnie Frisbee, the... the um, the hippie from the movie that was played by Jonathan Rumi. And and he and he thought it was important to get that message out about about Lonnie Frisbee. And he so Lonnie Frisbee the hippie, he says he was there in the very beginning and he said that he was like like a car engine, like when a car engine starts, that Lonnie was like the spark that kind of helped get the movement going. But Lonnie was only there for a short amount of time. He said they started in a small chapel and then they moved to the tent, and then they moved to their larger building there in Costa Mesa. And he said Lonnie was only there during, uh, in the small chapel. That Lonnie, by the time they got the tent, Lonnie was already gone. And La- and Lonnie had moved to Florida to work on his marriage. And the reality of that is, I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer here. Just to, and, and if you haven't seen the movie, you may just want to stop listening because, you know, I don't want you to be like me and hear too much about it before you go see it. But Lonnie... He did move to Florida. Him and his wife did end up getting a divorce, sadly. He did fall away from the faith. He spent some time away from the faith. Sadly, he died at age 43 from complications with AIDS. And But Greg thought it was important to get that message out. That, that That's the reality. That's the reality of life. Like God can use us, but we're still human. We're still flawed. And he wanted that to be, he wanted that to be shown in the movie that we're all flawed and that God can use flawed people. And so he also gave the message that like Lonnie, he ended up coming back to the faith before he passed away. And one of Greg's messages was, well, he just said, one of the things he said in the interview that I thought was good. He said, he said, God, God gives us potential, but we can still blow it. And we can all sabotage God. We can all sabotage God's plan for our life. But the, he does give us second chances. And Lonnie Frisbee did come back to the faith. But Greg was, on his last visit to him, when Lonnie was on his deathbed, he looked at Lonnie and his thought was, what, what could have been? Like, if he had, if he had stayed on, on, the, on the good track with his life, like, how much more impact could he have possibly had? And we have this potential God gives us potential, but we can still blow it. But he is a God of second chances. So even if we do blow it, we can still come back. And so anyway, I thought that was a great takeaway from a from a side interview. It is a great movie. I do recommend it. I'm sorry I set the expectations too high for myself, but uh, it is a great movie. So, all right. Another thing I was thinking about that when he was talking about, you know, look, looking at looking at Lonnie there passing away at age 43 and thinking about, you know, what could have been like. How much greater impact could he have possibly had? And um, you know, that makes me think of that Les Brown thing, where like Les Brown, I've mentioned this before, where he says, you know, when we're on our deathbed and our, our dreams and our goals, they're standing around our bed as we're passing away, and they're saying, "We came to you, and only you could have given us life, but now we have to go to the grave with you." Well, let's not let that happen. Let's not let that happen. If you have God-given dreams, take action on those take action. Bronnie Ware, the number one regret of the dying, I wish I'd had the courage to live life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Let's live life true to ourselves, all right? That's what I'm doing, and that's what I'm here to help you do, so let me know any way I may, any way I may help. With that, we're going to get into the Word. We are laying the foundation for life, 
and finding life this year, reading through the Word, reading through New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs, about a five-minute daily reading every morning. You guys are quiet out there in the live chat. I put, did I, uh, did I uh, make everyone mad? Let me know you're still with me, all right? All right, uh, we're going to get into the Word. Hey, the Word is life. Let's get excited about the life. Last, I, yesterday, I said on the live show, I said, Word is life, and they said it in the movie last night, Word is life. And uh, it is life. It's the foundation for life. Wisdom, Proverbs 835. Whoever finds me finds life. Matthew 7, small is the gate and narrow the path that leads to life. And only a few find it. I'm here to help you find it. All right, let's see. Here we go. Roll call, roll call. Thank you, Lucas. All right. I know some of you may not be able to, may not be able to type in right now. That's okay. All right. We're going to continue in the Word. Let's get excited about the Word. Mark. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be all alone. But many people recognized them and saw them leaving. And people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. I heard that line in the movie last night, too. Uh, that's what uh, Lonnie said in the movie. He said his people were like a sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, you feed them. With what, they asked. We'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. How much bread do you have, he asked. Go and find out. They came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in the groups of 50 or 100. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and bless them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterward the disciples picked up twelve baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of five thousand men and their families were fed from those loaves. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and head across the lake to Bethsaida where he sent the people home. After telling everyone goodbye, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Late that night, the disciples were in their boat in the middle of the lake, and Jesus was alone on land. He saw they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. He intended to go past them, but when he saw him walking on the water, they cried out in terror thinking he was a ghost. They were all terrified when they saw him. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then he climbed into the boat and the wind stopped. They were totally amazed, for they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves. Their hearts were too hard to take it in. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Gennesaret. They brought the boat to shore and climbed out. The people recognized Jesus at once, and they ran throughout the whole area, carrying sick people on mats to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he went, in villages, cities, or the countryside, they brought the sick out to the marketplaces. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. All right, today's psalm. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire, and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. He has given me a new song to sing. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Oh, the joys of those who trust the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud, or in those who worship idols. Oh, Lord my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans are too numerous. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. 
You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. You take no delight in the sacrifices or offerings. Now that you have made me listen, I finally understand. You don't require burnt offerings or sin offerings. Then I said, look, I have come. I got I went too many pages there. As is written about me in the scriptures, I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written on my heart. I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out. As you, O Lord, well know, I have not kept the good news of your justice hidden in my heart. I have talked about your faithfulness and saving power. I have told everyone in the great assembly of your unfailing love and faithfulness. All right, today's proverb. The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. Hatred stirs up quarrels, but love makes up for all offenses. All right, that's today's word. That's today's show. Thank you all for being here. If you're joining me in the, in the live stream, I greatly appreciate you. If you're joining me on YouTube after the recording, I greatly appreciate you. Thank you so much for your support. Hey, good morning, Jason McCormick. So glad to have you on the show, buddy. Let me get you added in here before we close out. Good morning. So great to have you all with me here this morning. I greatly appreciate you. If I can help you in any way, let me know. As I close today, I want to give you this thought. If we could live, if we could make this the best life possible, why wouldn't we? All right. All right, Audra. Thank you, Audra. Thank you, Audra. Love you guys. Have a great day. Happy March. Let's make today count. Let's live with intention. Let's live lives true to ourselves and let's live to our greatest potential. All right, until tomorrow. Hey friend, thanks for watching my video or listening to my podcast. Again, I'm so glad you're here. If you would like more information about Finding Life, please be sure to subscribe. Don't forget about my free PDF download, the top three keys to finding life, which also includes the one decision that completely changed everything for me and can for you too. I'll have a link to it below. If you would like to help me help others find life, please be sure to give me a like, leave me a comment, a review, share with your family and friends. Any activity I get helps me help others find life. Lastly, don't forget to let me know how I can help you. What challenges are you facing? What are you struggling with? Let me know how I can help you specifically. Leave me a comment, send me an email, or set up a call with me. Until next time, let me leave you with this. There is a common thread that connects us all, and there is more to life than meets the eye. If you have ever felt like there has to be something more to life, you're on the right track. Keep moving forward. Yeah.